Merrick Garland must think he's a dictator's chief of staff. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Yeah, you heard what I said. Attorney General Merrick Garland yesterday bragged about the Trump raid. Now He now says he personally authorized it, but in the process, he made his department look unable to get its story straight. We're going to talk about that and also how the mainstream media clearly reveal themselves to be Spin Hospital Central in covering that announcement and everything else they do. Before we dive into it, I want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I've chosen for today, which reads, Freedom isn't free. And how true that is. And today, I'm going to show you why. Merrick Garland delivered his latest remarks at a press conference yesterday afternoon. Now, for whatever motive, he also published those remarks on the Justice Department website, and I have a link to his published remarks and to footage from Disclosed TV of him speaking in the description. And he began by announcing that he had filed a motion with Magistrate Judge Bruce E. Reinhardt to unseal the warrant. Then he made this strange remark. Copies of both the Warren and the FBI property receipt were provided on the day of the search to the former president's counsel who were on site during the search. Well, tell that to lawyer Christine uh, Bob, who said that the lead agent showed her the warrant from 10 feet away and then told everybody to get on. They had to stand around in the sweltering heat. But we now hear from Bob that CNBC uh, uh, that she told CNBC that somebody did leave a copy of the warrant at the residence. Now maybe they didn't leave the copy until after the search was done. Garfield then uh, Garland then repeated several boilerplate comments. I don't think any of them are sincere. And then he gave these stunners. Quote: First, I personally approve the decision to seek a warrant, uh, search warrant in this matter. Second. The department does not take such a decision lightly. Where possible, it is standard practice to seek less intrusive means as an alternative to a search and to narrowly scope any search that is undertaken. Third, let me address recent unfounded attacks on the professionalism of the FBI and the Justice Department agents and prosecutors. I will not stand by silently when their integrity is unfairly attacked, unquote Mary Garland. Well, Trump has his own platform, of course, Truth Social, and you'll find a link to that in the description. You will also find links to four posts he made on that platform. I decided to group them all together. Now, in response to Merrick Garland's remarks, Trump immediately posted a comment about Barack Obama taking documents when him when he left the White House. I quote, I continue to ask what happened to the 33 million pages of documents taken to Chicago by President Obama. The fake news media refuses to talk about that they want it canceled. Unquote President Trump, who posted that last word canceled in all caps. Later in the evening, he forcefully indicated his support for the motion to unseal. Todd Starnes has the full text. I've left a link in the description, and I'm going to read it all to you right now. Not only will I not oppose the release of documents related to the un-American, unwarranted, and unnecessary raid and break-in of my home in Palm Beach, Florida, Mar-a-Lago, I am going a step further by ENCOURAGING, all caps, the immediate release of these documents even though they have been drawn up by radical left Democrats and possible future political opponents who have a strong and powerful vested interest in attacking me, much as they have done for the last six years. Uh, my poll numbers are the strongest they have ever been. Fundraising by the Republican Party is breaking all records 
and midterm elections are fast approaching. This unprecedented political weaponization of law enforcement is inappropriate and highly unethical. The world is watching as our country is being brought to a new low, not only on our border, crime, economy, energy, natural security, and so much more, but also with respect to our sacred elections. Release the documents now, unquote Donald Trump. And for your information, many influencers have attested to his remarks in that second paragraph, including Trump himself breaking all those fundraising records. Also for your information, Judge Reinhardt already has two motions to unseal before him from Judicial Watch and the Albany Times Union. That's Albany, New York, that is. Well, the spin doctrine began within hours. Political.com, in its headline, praised Merrick Garland for calling Trump's bluff. <laughs> Can you believe those guys? They also suggested that Trump's lawyers had the absolute right to release the warrant once they had it in hand. Not true, of course, because under seal means under seal, and that in turn means shut your trap and keep it shut. Well, that's a moot point now, given Merrick Garland's uh, uh, own motion. The White House, after its, after its usual Mission Impossible secretarial fashion, disavowed any advanced knowledge of that press conference. I have a link in the description to footage that the Washington Free Beacon provided. I have links in the description to two of the strangest tweets I've ever seen. One is from Occupy Democrats, who actually suggested that Trump loses with the release of the warrant and supporting documents. Another is from Representative Eric Newcomb Swalwell of California. He seemed to say that the same thing Politico.com said. Now listen to this. Donald won't hashtag show it or shut it, so DOJ just filed uh, its motion to unseal the search warrant. Uh, Swalwell was then good enough to provide a link to Garland's motion to unseal. I've left the link in the description. So... Let's dive into that while I'm on the subject. The initial statements of that motion provide more spin. Get this. At the time the warrant was initially executed, the department provided notice directly to former President Trump's counsel. Oh, really? Oh, yes. The agent showed Christina Bob the warrant from 10 feet away. <laughs> Still, the rest of the motion Assumes that assures the court that the government will happily oblige the public if Trump agrees, which, of course, he does. Now, you have to ask yourself, what game is Merrick Garland playing? First, Merrick Garland seems to have laid on his decision rather suddenly. The day before yesterday, Newsweek carried a report saying Merrick Garland did not authorize that raid. That report also confirmed that the FBI got their information from a spy in Trump's household staff. Newsweek, as I told you yesterday, got their information from two senior government officials. Those anonymous sources laid the blame on FBI Director Christopher Wray. Now, maybe the late J. Edgar Hoover, if he ever would have had a motive, say, to raid the, the retirement home of President Lyndon Baines Johnson after he left the White House, might have taken matters into his own hands to, an ex to such an extent. But Christopher Ray, are you fox trotting kidding me? Then a day later, Merrick Garland personally avows having authorized that raid himself. Now that leaves Newsweek with egg on their face. But Maybe the Attorney General also wants to send a message to those two STOs. STFU! That's S-T-F-U. Hey, you figure it out. I'm sure you see that often enough in angry text messages and Reddit posts. And then he goes on to, quote, address recent unfounded attacks on the professionalism of the FBI and Justice Department agents and prosecutors. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, does he think he's kidding? At midday yesterday, a report came 
that an armed man tried to break into the visitor screening center of the FBI field office in Cincinnati, Ohio. At 9 a.m. Eastern Time, an alarm sounded, and FBI agents responded and chased him away down Interstate 71. Again, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot! They couldn't stop this guy from jumping into his car, turning the key, flooring it, and roaring down the road. They let him get onto the interstate? Hey, don't talk to me about FBI professionalism. Not when they behave like those Keystone cops. Except you want to know what I think? I think that story stinks. And the stink is a false flag pseudo-operation. Now at this point, I want to get to Trump's version of events, but before I do, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working hard for your money just to get by? You're not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life you know, stuff happens, right? Well, that has left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know how or where to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities that company provides, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. All right, now, here's Trump's version. Again, he put this out on Truth Social, and you can find in the description a whole section of his post of that medium. Here, are, here he details the events leading up to the raid. Quote, My attorneys and representatives were cooperating fully and very good relationships had been established. The government could have had whatever they wanted if we had it. They asked me to put an additional lock on a certain area. Done. Everything was fine. <laughs> Better than that of most previous presidents. And then, out of nowhere, and with no warning, Mar-a-Lago was raided at 6.30 in the morning by very large numbers of agents and even safe crackers. They got way ahead of themselves. Crazy. The details, according to the, that I got from the Blaze, are worse than that. The earlier visit took place on June 3rd. Then the FBI asked Trump to, Trump to install a second padlock on a safe room containing those documents in question. Trump did. But in the August 8th raid, the agents broke that lock to get into the room. And here again are Trump's words on the subject. In early June, the DOJ and FBI asked my legal representatives to put an extra lock on the door leading to the place where boxes were stored in Mar-a-Lago. We agreed. They were, they were shown the secured area and the boxes themselves. Then on Monday, without notification or warning, an army of agents broke into Mar-a-Lago, went to that same, that same storage area, and ripped open the lock that they had asked to be installed. A surprise attack, politics, and all the while, our country is going to H-E double hockey sticks. Now, Glenn Beck said flatly, this is not looking good for the FBI. He expressed high skepticism that the FBI agents stayed within the terms of the warrant. I left the link in the description to his podcast and I am going to put that into the end screen on YouTube. Here is his best point. That warrant had better damn well say that they can break into that safe because the law is you can't go into somebody's house and just tear it all apart. You have to have a pretty good idea of where things might be located and you ask for permission for those areas. And you have to know exactly what you're looking for and if it's in a safe, 
you need to specifically say it's in a safe and we're having a safe cracker come in. If they didn't say that in the warrant, then they could, uh, that they could crack his safe. It's the fruit of the poison tree. And by the way, there was nothing in the safe. Unquote Glenn Beck. Now you know what he's talking about? I'll tell you. The Weeks Doctrine, or the Exclusionary Rule. If you exceed the terms of a search warrant, any evidence you find while so exceeding becomes inadmissible in court. Weeks versus United States, 1914. Look it up. Other reaction came, it came in from a senator and two representatives. From Marsha Blackburn, Merrick Garland personally approved a search warrant to take down Joe Biden's key political opponent. This is a politically motivated witch hunt. From Representative John Carter, or Judge Carter as he calls himself. For the Democrats, the FBI has become a tool to attack political opponents. He can say that again. I won't say that J. Edgar Hoover is spinning in his grave or anything like that, but if he knew, he'd likely be roaring at Chris Frey and asking whether he was out of his fox-trotting mind to go along with a thing like this. And finally, from Representative Jody Arrington, A.G. Garland spent four minutes reading an empty and inconsequential statement and then refused to take questions. We still don't know the reason for the raid, the nature and extent of probable cause, and why the DOJ felt it necessary to take such extreme and intrusive measures. Well, hey, I can tell you why Mary Garland felt it necessary to take such extreme and intrusive measures. Now, some of you watching that disclosed TV footage of him uh, delivering the, the, that statement will think, oh, he took one for the team, or in this case, the boss. After all, the White House continues to disavow any prior knowledge of any action he take uh, he ta has taken uh, he took or has ta takes or has taken. But when I look at Merrick Garland, I don't see Peter Graves as Jim Phelps on Mission Impossible. I see Peter Cushing as Governor or Grand Moff Tarkin in the original Star Wars, the 1977 movie. You know the lines. I promise you that fear will keep these systems in line. Fear of the Imperial Fleet and of this station. Hit now no dedicated patriotic bomb league servant orders people to raid a former president's house as if he's Al Capone. Nor does he boast about it afterward. But what, uh, but, uh, one wanting people to, well, but one wanting people to fear him does. If you want another example from another movie, I give you Stephen Boyd as Masala in Ben-Hur, 1959. I asked for your help. Now you've given it to me. By condemning without hesitation an old friend, I discourage treason. By making this example of you, I shall be feared. In staging that Keystone Cops theatrical in Cincinnati, serve to keep the sympathies of the American political left. Otherwise, some old-timers among them are going to remember COINTELPRO and maybe make a connection uh, that Merrick Garland doesn't want them to make, as former Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York already has. And it's time for the rest of us to make that same connection ourselves and plan accordingly. Oh, just one more thing, to paraphrase Peter Falk as Lieutenant Colombo. When I was writing this up, the Washington Post evidently came out with a fresh attempt to justify the Trump raid. According to Breitbart, the Post cited an indefinite number of first people familiar with the investigation, there you go, Messrs. Piffwitz, as saying the FBI went after classified documents about nuclear weapons. Also, according to Breitbart, the Post gave no further details. So in reply, Trump has already said, and I quote, nuclear weapons issue is a hoax, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was a hoax, two impeachments were a hoax, the Mueller investigation was a hoax, and much more. Let me remind you, Eric Swalwell has a reputation for threatening nuclear attacks on rebellious Americans. Furthermore, if anyone submitted a movie script uh, framing these events as a political thriller, 
Most studios would tell him, don't call us, we'll call you. Well, they would 50 years ago. God knows what they would say today. But that goes double for a script about whatever Merrick Garland wants to convince the American people that Trump is planning. This suggests another movie script from the Clinton era, Wag the Dog from 1997. Link to the description of the article, to Mary Garland's remarks, to Trump's statement supporting the motion to unseal, to footage of the White House disavowing any prior knowledge of the press conference, to those two silly tweets uh, saying, good move, Mary, way to tell Trump to show it or shut it, to the motion to unseal itself, to Glenn Beck's podcast, to those tweets from Senator Blackburn and those two representatives, to truthsocial.com and four posts by Trump on that media, that platform, and to conservative news and views. I've, all, I've also left links to the awesome online store and to ourcivilized.com, as I also mentioned. And if you like what you've heard, you can like this video. And on the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link and definitely a uh, the links to yet, links to an early report about Merrick being, Garland being on the hot seat and to Glenn Beck's podcast. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.